sight into an athlete's mind. <laughs> I like the uh, advice that Brady Ellison has for celebrating. And we'll see tomorrow if he does indeed get to celebrate. Right now, it's time for the men to go at it once again. It's time for the men's compound bronze medal match. And it's Peter Alzinga and Julio Ricardo Fierro both back, both trying to shake off losses and the disappointment of those losses. Mm. Peter Alzinga, of course, really had it tough trying to go up against Rio Wild, who uh, doesn't miss very much. No, he doesn't. But uh, with all Peter's uh, world records, he doesn't miss a lot either. So uh, you'd have to favor, normally you'd favor Peter for this match, but I'm not so sure. This guy's on form. Julio Ricardo Fierro ranks seventh in the world. And in his semifinal match, was matched up against Braden Gelentine. And in that match, had a string of tens, but then had a string of nines. He did. He had did. four straight nines, and that really spelled disaster for him as he lost 147 to 144 to Braden Gelentine. But he looked good this morning. Yeah. He can, seems to be when he's shooting well, he's really on good track. But then, like, he had a little wobble. But that, that little dip in performance, that comes with experience. Normally, with the more practice you have, you'll be able to sort things out faster. You'll be able to get back to where you want to be faster. So let's hope with a, with a few more years under his belt, he'll just uh, get better and better. But we haven't got a few years to wait. We've got a few seconds. So we'll see how he does. Peter Elzinga of the Netherlands, ranked 12th in the world, will go first. Had that quarterfinal victory over Pierre Julien Deloche this morning, 143 to 142, and then was on the short end of the score against Rio Wild. Now Fierro, who fell to Braden Gelentine, which set up the All-American Finals, we'll see in just a moment, but tens for both of these arches to start things off. Peter shooting under the watchful eye of Coach Oitza Van Alten. Okay. Look at the heart rate mm. in the 50s. That's crazy. I was expecting much higher, like, like, like 112, yes. A little bit different than the heart rate, but uh, the result is still the same. Well, Maybe I it helps to be fired up a little bit. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you do it. 10, 10, 10. We may oh, have to think. check Peter to see if he has a pulse. <laughs> but he's got the range as he comes up with three straight bullseyes to start off this bronze medal match against Julio Ricardo Fierro, who must answer with a 10 to remain tied. And he does. So a great start to this match. And both of these young men obviously wanting to pick up the bronze medal and go home with some hardware from the World Cup Finals here in Tokyo. Julio Ricardo Fierro knocking off Dominique Genet in the quarterfinals. Just 22 years old. He was hoping to get back to the finals and try to get matched up against Rio Wild again. He not only lost to Rio in Shanghai at the beginning of this year, also dropped a match to him in uh, Las Vegas at the Indoor Championships. Okay, okay. But he'll have to wait for another day to avenge that. Right now, he's got to take care of the business at hand, and that's trying to pick up the bronze medal here and defeat Peter Elzinga. And the sky's darkening just a little bit. The breeze picking up just a little bit. I wonder if we're in line for one of those uh, torrential, tor torrential downpours we've had lately. I know there's rain in the forecast for tomorrow. Okay. So we'll see about that, see how the recurve archers, see what kind of weather they get. Today, the conditions have been almost perfect, at least from a spectator's standpoint. Yes, and I think from an archer's point of view as well. We've had a slight wind in the venue, but generally speaking, it's not been overly bright, it's not been windy, and it's not been wet. And so far, nobody has blinked. Five shots for both of these archers, or four shots, excuse me, and all have been tens. Very steady, and it shows. 
That's world record steadiness as well. If you're just used to it, if, if having a high re heart rate is what you do, then it's fine. You're used to it. You're, 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 you've set your equipment up to shoot that way, and it's just a way of life as it was. And I think we'll find there'll be different athletes that always come in at the same heart rate. Now, if Peter jumps up from 50 to 110, we know something's, we know something's got him fired. What a display of shooting we are seeing right now in this compound match. Each has shot six tens. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And the delegation from Mexico. Excited, yes. fired up. Yes, if we, they can beat uh, Rio's uh, string of tens. Did he get uh, nine, nine tens in a row, or was it 10? Well, let's go back and take a look at our notes we'll very quickly can, and uh, see. Rio started off his match. Uh, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten okay. tens. That's the goal then. So Rio had ten tens to start his match. And right now, neither of these archers has blinked. Both with perfect scores and we're tied up. Sixty all. And Julio Ricardo Fierro looking very comfortable yeah. in this situation. But the same goes for Peter Elzinga. Peter's got a bit more experience under his belt. But uh, both of them are looking on form today. So with Peter's release height, he just has to keep pulling. And as he pulls, he right shoots. on the line. That'll keep him in. The streak continues. And the ball is back in the court of Julio Ricardo Fierro. On the line, but it's a beautiful shot. There are no ugly tens, are there? No, there's not. You'd always prefer it to be on the dead center, but frankly, even if it's just scraping the line, it all looks the same on the score sheet. Now the heart rate has gone up a little bit for El Zinga, and that'll make the heart rate go up a little bit even more, I think, being on the line like that. That's the first time we've seen him uh, get pumped up. He's been sitting around the 50s and the 60s. So maybe it's a sign, this string of tens. Oh. So it comes to an end for Julio Ricardo Fierro, who falls behind by one point after seven consecutive tens to start the match. Oh, but it's just, just as we well. say that, yes, El Zinga is out of the center ring. And so with a 10 here, we're tied up again. Also, so many times I've seen that. Both athletes, tens, tens, tens. Someone makes a mistake. The other athlete starts to think about that, and then you end up with both of them dropping points. But another nine there. Although, that being said, you're not supposed to be paying attention to what the other fellow is doing, are you? Not at all. No, not no, at no. all. You'd no. never do that. You, never, you would never notice that type of thing, would you? Not at all, not at all. But obviously here with <laughs> George Tetmichov uh, calling it out, sometimes it's uh, impossible to avoid. Everybody's human. There's 89 out of a possible 90 points. Peter Alzinga shooting a tremendous match right now, inspecting his arrows. Again, he'll just be checking to make sure he hasn't had any knocks damaged. If the end of the arrow sometimes get hit by another arrow coming in, it can cause damage and then we can miss arrows. So always every end, collect your arrows, inspect them, get ready to shoot again. He doesn't look too stressed, does he? Ah, but you always wonder what's what's beneath the still waters. Ah, beautiful sight here in Tokyo. Just the water fountain creeping up over the barrier behind the targets. We are in Hibiya Park in downtown Tokyo on a Saturday afternoon. We'll be back tomorrow for the recurve competition. Hopefully the weather will hold and we'll have matches that are every bit as compelling as the ones we have seen so far today. Fierro trailing 89-88 will go first now on target number two. Killed the spider. He did. Excellent. It's better than the ones that just scrape the edge of the ten. It's always <laughs> nice just to, bam, take the middle out. Okay, That's not bad either. It's close enough. That'll work. 
anclaje, Julio. No pasa nada, no pasa nada. You can see it's calmed down. The flag above the target is just slightly flickering. It's near perfect conditions here. And a near perfect shot as Julio Ricardo has recovered. Recovered. Only one of his shots has been outside the 10 ring. He's had an excellent match. Oh, but that is a tough shot right there for Peter Elzinga, an eight. See, he dropped his last shot against against Rio was the same. The pressure was on and he just shot an eight low. That's, that's a strange place. He must just be dropping his front arm, but that's this, that one shot again has totally turned the match around. To this point. I wonder what, wonder what Peter does, whether it's a side thing that his hand drops down or whether it's an execution problem and he doesn't quite shoot the shot as strong as he should, but he's back on form again. He shook it off and came back with a 10 after the disappointing eight. But be that as it may, it is still a reversal of fortunes here in this fourth end. After the third end, Elzinga had the one point lead, 89 to 88. And yet right now it's 118 to 117. Fierro with a two-point swing right there, all because of that eight scored by Peter Elzinga. When he was coming off the line, they're talking to his coach, Wietse Van Out, and he was, you could see that he was saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why that arrow went there. And you can see even now, it's still playing on his mind, but Peter, you gotta just forget about it, move on, and uh, focus on those other two arrows, which went absolutely dead center, so. As a famous coach I know, like to say, you've got to play forward. Yeah. Play forward, yeah. forget about what's happened, play on. And that is what Peter Elzinga must do right here. He's got to shoot tens from here on out and hope that his opponent falters just a little bit. And that's exactly what Fierro is hoping not to do. Fierro, he did suffer a little bit towards the end of his, uh, his last match. So whether he'll do it again, I don't know. The man from the Netherlands outside the 10 ring with a nine. Yeah, in a similar area to that eight as well. So I wonder if it's the same mistake he's making. Something has gone awry. And the door is open for Juan Julio Ricardo. That's not what the Dutchman wanted. Two point lead, two arrows to go. Maybe this has just been Mexico's year. Okay, on. Regains his form on that one. So Peter Elzinga keeping his hopes alive. Look at that focus. Yeah. And look at that grouping. I'll still give you sight a click. No, he's not going to. <laughs> he has to finish strong yeah, and then Good pray. Man. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily going to go his way, though. But there's a lot of pressure on one shot. Nine or better, and there's the winner. Three straight tens to finish off the match. Fantastic result. What a great way to finish a match. In fact, he finished it off very, very strongly and wins the bronze medal here. So Julio Ricardo Fierro who picked up a silver medal in Shanghai at stage one, mm. finishes the season with a bronze medal here at the World Cup Finals in Tokyo. He'll be really pleased with that. What a great way to go into the what many people would consider the off season. I'm sure he's probably got a vacation booked and now he's got a bit of extra luggage if he wants. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter Elzinga will wonder what if. He shot great matches here in the semifinals and mm. in the in the bronze medal match, and it just wasn't enough. It's just, but you can you can analyze it in both matches. There was he was right there. There was then he made a crucial mistake, and both times shot a low eight. And it's hard with a level of shooting now at, at world archery events around around the globe. You shoot a low eight, or shoot any eight. It's uh, it's uh, makes your life extremely hard. And both times he's paid the ultimate price. So close. And yet so far, 148-146 is the final in the compound bronze medal match for the men. And Julio Ricardo Fierro takes the hardware home.